Greetings from Jim, AG6IF. Tonight I want to show you how to put the broadband hamnet software firmware on a WRT54G. This is a G model. Uh, this, the firmware will actually work on the G, the GS, or the GL. GS and the G are versions 1 through 4 are compatible. All the versions of GL are compatible. So if you're trying to remember, if you're at a yard sale, <laughs> you find a GL, that was good luck. Good luck, GL. Um, go ahead and pick it up. If you get a G or a GS that's beyond version 4, like 5 or above, the software the firmware is not going to work on there. However, there are uses for those anyway. If you extend your broadband hamnet, uh, mesh to a regular Wi-Fi router, you can then connect up your you know, laptop, cell phone, and so on. So the first thing you do is turn this thing on. This is a clean one that's been factory reset. And uh, you turn it on, and you um, generally you go to 192.168.1.1. One one. Uh, I'm using Linux, so I'm going to show you first thing I did was went and looked to see what kind of IP address it gave me and when I plugged in the, uh, the network cable here and it gave me 1.100 which is a standard so the web server for the management console for the WRT54 generally is on 192.168.1.1 punch that into my browser and here we go and this is the screen you get Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Administration, and there's a Firmware Upgrade link right there. Firmware Upgrade. Now, I've previously pulled down from the Broadband Hamnet website the firmware. Right now, this is October 8th. 2014, all of my mesh nodes are running version 1.0.0. They do all have to be the same version generally. It's not entirely true in all cases, but the new version, the newest version is 1.2.1. They've discovered a bug in there and they've put out a quick experimental version of 3.0.0. Uh, I'm going to upgrade this later. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm just going to put on the same version that all my other mesh nodes are using so that this new one can see my mesh nodes, all my mesh node uh, environment. All right, so, um, and that's a constantly moving target too for the, the version numbers. But first of all, I'm going to go to Browse, and I keep all of my mesh software in a, uh, a directory out there. Um, so I'm going to find the version of code for the G and uh, that is the 1.00 for the G code right here that's my shack cat he interprets my voice as saying do you want some tuna alright so I'm gonna select the G code this guy right here and it's a bin file uh, later on, if you do the upgrade, you'll use a, the TRX file, like that. So there's the 100 TRX. Here's a 112. Uh, I'm sorry, earlier I said 121. It's 112, uh, the TRX. So uh, I'll probably wait for them to fix or to become more comfortable with version 300. Then I'll go download the TRX, and then I'll upgrade all of my machines, all of my routers. All right, so we're going to select that one, the G code. I'm going to hit open. Uh, now this is important, this part. Um, basically, you're going to hit upgrade. You don't want to interrupt this when it's running. Uh, so once, it takes a little bit. So we're going to hit upgrade. It's going to put the code up there, and it'll go through a couple of reset process. So here we go. Upgrade must not be interrupted. That is good advice. Okay, is the upgrades going across? 
Once this upgrade happens, the WRT54 is going to reboot. <clears throat> when it does that, I need to disconnect my network cable and reconnect so that I get a, I will get a different IP address. Uh, so that's, that's a key thing to remember. We'll follow along here. This is uh, still upgrading. It'll tell you when it's done. CPU lights flashing. So far, so good. And once the upgrade happens, it's going to tell you it's successful. This is going to reboot. Okay, so it's rebooting now. Takes a little bit. CPU lights flashing, that's normal. The next light, the DMZ light, when that light, the first of all, the CPU light will stop flashing. Then the DMZ light is going to go off. And at that point, the router is basically up. So we're going to watch for this light right here, the second one that you can see, go off. And that, that tells you the uh, WRT54 is running the firmware, the new firmware, and it's up. Once that happens, I'll disconnect my network cable and reconnect it. By the way, it's connected into one of the LAN ports on the back. Okay, you want to use the LAN port, not the, not the WAN port, the one that's off by itself. Okay, so that's off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this cable. Uh, I can also stop my network card, but let's pull that off. I'm going to get a message here. Generally, I'll get a message that I'm disconnected, okay? And then I'm going to plug this back in, all right? And I should get a connect message. In Windows, you can do an IP config, okay? Now, now it's going to, I'll have a new IP address. And we don't really care precisely what that is, but there was the old one. I'm going to do my IF config command again. Okay, here's the new one. So 172. We're not too worried about that because we're going to go to a new web address here. And that web address is no longer 192.168.1.1. It is local node, N-O-D-E, colon 8080. Just like that. And what's going to come up is this screen here. So we do have to do the initial setup. There's no call sign in there. You must do the setup. So we're going to do that now. Now my naming convention is my zip code dash my call sign and then a, a numeric number. This router, I'm going to press setup. This one is going to be dash 006. Um, so it's going to be my, I'm sorry, my call sign, my zip code dash 006. My password. Uh, I've used all the same passwords on my all my, my machines. Put in that twice, right here. Okay. Once you got that, leave the defaults. It's a mesh node. Uh, the default now is five direct hosts. By the way, I run a Raspberry Pi with a uh, VoIP phone system using asterisks across this and you can also do video video webcams and all kinds of neat things all right so once you get that set you're going to hit save changes it's going to reboot okay it's rebooting now uh, basically this is what the lights are going to do they flash the cpu light generally will flash might have missed that There it goes. Uh, and once again, as it boots up, the DMZ light, which is the next one over, will shut off. Let's see if we can get a shot of that. Okay, as soon as the DMZ light goes off, it should be up and we'll log back in. There we go. 
Okay, back to the browser here. Again, it's local node 8080. So just um, come back here. It'll redirect you to the setup page. And let's just see if we've got a restart. You know what? One more step I forgot. we got to re reconnect our network cable again. So I'm going to pull that out. Wait for a disconnect. Plug it back in. We'll get a reconnect. There we go. Okay. And back here to the local node, colon 8080 again. All right. Here's our... Uh, our new screen, it's got my call sign, it's got my zip code, and uh, this is my router 006. Uh, first thing I like to do is just hit the mesh status button right here. Now I've got other uh, routers here, so number 006, you can see one, which is in my mobile actually, one's in my mobile, along with the Raspberry Pi server, two, three, four, and five, so there's my six, six machines. My fifth machine has advertised services of web. So now, um, now I, I would be able to use the internet from this connection right here. Uh, I can also um, make phone calls on my Raspberry Pi Asterix phone system, which I have two phone extensions. See, I think I have a browser here. Um, let's just see if I can find it real quick, free PBX. Okay, here's my asterisk screen. I refresh this. You may ask me to log in. No, okay. So this is a web server running asterisk. This is actually in my car, connected up to node 001. Um, as you can see, we got two. So anyway, my pathway is laptop to a hard wire to this mesh node which is connected to my mesh my mesh and from there any services available is shown here on the screen so that is how you build a uh, WRT54 broadband hamnet mesh node now if you obtain one of these guys and there's a password on there you have to do the reset procedure which is holding the power button in uh, for 10 or 10 seconds, you can look this up, but it's, I hold the power button in, I unplug the power from the unit, continue to hold the power, the reset button in, I'm sorry, reset button, and then I power the unit back on with the reset button held the whole time. That brings it up to a default mode, um, and then you can, you can, it brings it all back to the stock, the stock configs. If you get one that's extremely uh, cranky, like somebody's put a alternate firmware on there, like Tomato or some of those WRTDD. Uh, there is a way to um, using FTP to actually flash the thing from a brick mode. Um, there's the timing is important there, but it does work. So there's a lot of information on how to do that on the uh, Broadband Hamnet website, or you can use your favorite search engine uh, to obtain that information. But it is possible. I have. Um, unbricked quite a few that have been brought to me from other uh, local hams who are working on this same project so but that is how you bring one of these guys up it automatically joined my mesh my versions 100 I'm going to be upgrading them all as soon as the uh, talented team there gets uh, version 300 either general release or uh, I find a reason to do so like if I want to connect to someone else's mesh, I'm going to have to do it. So right now I'm kind of isolated on 100. But it works great. 100 works good. So um, let's see. I don't know that I've missed anything. I think it's all here. This is a normal behavior. Got a few packets coming down the wire to my web server that you saw. And uh, there's some, some traffic out on my, uh, my mesh node right now. That's the flashing... Uh, light, the Wi-Fi light. So, anyway, uh, try to collect some version one through four WRT fifty four G, uh, GS, or any of the GL models. 
grab the code right off the Broadband Hamnet website and join in the fun. This is Jim, AG6IF, Southern California. Thank you for watching, and I hope you can join us on the uh, broadband uh, bandwagon there. <laughs> 7-3-0. Thanks for watching.